Hello and welcome friends, myself Dr. Smiley Puthi, I am National Level Faculty Teaching Biochemistry. In this video, I am going to take my part 2 video in which we are discussing biochemistry questions for the upcoming exam NEET 2018. So, it's like a revision and I am taking most tricky questions here to explain you a few concepts so that it is easy for you to do the revision. So, let's get started. The first question which I have taken is defect in alpha oxidation of fatty acid leads to. This is a frequently asked question. Options given are Refsum's disease, Jamaican vomiting sickness, Zellweger well syndrome and dicarboxylic acid urea. Answer here is Refsum's disease. So let's see the explanation. Defect in peroxisomes can lead to two syndromes. One is defect in alpha oxidation that leads to Refsum's disease. Other is defect in the oxidation of very long chain fatty acids and that leads to Zellweger syndrome. The second option which is written is Jamaican vomiting sickness. So, let's see this detail also. This is a sickness occurring due to a defect in beta oxidation of fatty acid. This occurs after ingestion of unripe fruit of ackee tree because it contains toxin that is hypoglycin. This hypoglycin will inhibit the fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase enzyme which is one of the enzyme in beta oxidation of fatty acid. So, the patient will be having severe hypoglycemia because normally what happens that in liver beta oxidation of fatty acid occurs so that we get acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA acts activates gluconeogenesis. So, if beta oxidation is not occurring, then this acetyl CoA is not obtained. So, it cannot activate gluconeogenesis pathway. So, hypoglycemia will occur in these patients and in these patients, severe hypoglycemia occurs. Sudden vomiting occurs within 2 to 6 hours after taking this fruit. And it can be so severe that convulsions, coma and death can also occur. Now, let's see the detail of alpha oxidation. Alpha oxidation occurs in peroxisomes and endoplasmic reticulum. This is occurring for brown chain fatty acids, for example, phytanic acid which is present in dairy products and green leafy vegetables. There is removal of one carbon from the alpha carbon atom. In this pathway, no ATP is produced. And Refsum's disease occur because of defect in alpha oxidation in peroxisomes and phytanic acid is not broken down so it is not oxidized and it starts getting accumulating. So in these patients we have to restrict dairy products and green leafy vegetables. Coming to the next question, this is a very big question so let's read this question. A tRNA molecule which that is supposed to carry cysteine is mischarged so that it actually carries alanine now. Assuming no correction occurs, what will be the fate of this alanine residue during protein synthesis? Let me tell you the basics first. See here, this is tRNA. This is 5 dash end of tRNA. This is 3 dash end of tRNA. This is anticodone loop on tRNA. Amino acids get attached at the 3 dash end of tRNA. Amino acid attached here. So, anticodone is present on tRNA, but codone is present on mRNA. Now, codone and anticodone have complementary base pairing. In translation, this codone on mRNA will recognize the anticodone. So, codone and anticodone binds. But let me tell you one basic point here that codone can see only anticodone. It cannot see which amino acid is attached. For example, suppose codone is for cysteine, anticodone is also for cysteine, right? And let's suppose a wrong amino acid, for example, methionine is getting attached at the 3 dash end of this tRNA. So, now nobody can see this is wrong because I told you the basic is codone can see only anticodone. It cannot see which amino acid is attached. So, now this wrong amino acid will be attached, right? To bring the correct amino acid that is the work of tRNA. If tRNA is bringing a wrong amino acid, then that wrong amino acid will be added, right? So, now see the question again. A tRNA molecule that is supposed to carry cysteine is mischarged. Supposed to carry cysteine means the anticodone is for cysteine. 
so that it actually carries alanine. So a wrong amino acid it is carrying that is alanine. They are saying that no correction is occurring in this case. Normally if it occurs in body correction can occur. We have enzyme amino acyl TRNA synthetase that can do this correction that can do this proof reading step. But if this correction is not occurring they are telling you in the question correction has not occurred. What will happen to this alanine residue? So I told you codone can see only anticodone. It cannot see which amino acid is attached. Whatever wrong or right amino acid is attached there that will be added. So option B is correct here. You can pause the video and you can see all the options but I am just going to, going to mark the correct option here. It will be incorporated that is alanine will be incorporated into a protein in response to a cysteine codone. Right? So codone is for cysteine, anticodone is for cysteine but wrong amino acid alanine if it is coming that is getting added to the protein. So, See the third question, the hydrolytic step for the release of polypeptide from a ribosome is catalyzed by which of the following? In this question they are talking of translation. In translation we have initiation, elongation and termination. During elongation we have one ribozyme that is peptidyl transferase present that is helping in making the peptide bond because it cut amino acid from P site and attach the amino acid to the A site of the ribosome. Now in termination, in termination we have to release the polypeptide from the P site. Polypeptide is released from P site. This is also a frequently asked question. Now in termination releasing factors are present, releasing factors. In eukaryotes we have a single releasing factor but in prokaryotes we have RF1, RF2, RF3 that is releasing factors 1, 2 and 3. But let me tell you that this releasing word here is a misnomer. Releasing factors do not release the polypeptide, the name is a misnomer. Peptidyl transferase ribozyme which is having a role in elongation also, it has also a role in termination that peptidyl, peptidyl transferase will help in releasing the polypeptide. So answer is B here. Next question is what is the importance of lactic acid production in glycolysis? This is also a frequently asked question. This concept of NAD, NADH here at this one step of anaerobic glycolysis is very very important. So let's see the detail. See here, this is glucose, glucose gets converted to pyruvate, two pyruvate molecules and in this case two ATPs we obtain plus two NADH we obtain. The net gain of ATP is two ATP when glucose gets converted to two pyruvate and we get two NADH which can go into mitochondria and can take part in ETC giving five ATPs. So five plus two ATPs we get seven ATPs in aerobic glycolysis. But in case of anaerobic glycolysis there is one extra step of pyruvate conversion to lactate. So two pyruvate gets converted to two lactate and the name of enzyme here is lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase when works it converts NADH to NAD. So now in this step NADH gets converted to NAD. When glucose was getting converted to pyruvate then NAD was getting converted to NADH but now opposite is happening. So the purpose of this extra step of anaerobic glycolysis done by enzyme lactate dehydrogenase its purpose is not the production of lactate its purpose is to produce NAD again so that NAD can again be used for glycolysis so that these steps can go on and on. Otherwise if we do not regenerate NAD in this last step then glycolysis will stop and we do not want that. So the extra step of anaerobic glycolysis is for the regeneration of NAD. So see the question again, what is the importance of lactic acid production in glycolysis or we can say what is the importance of that step by lactate dehydrogenase. The importance is regeneration of NAD. So option A will be the answer here. Coming to question number 5, the given is the structure of a protein which bond is responsible for the structure. You can see the structure, the sequence of the amino acid is shown here aspartate, glycine, phenylalanine, glutamate like that. 
So, you know, sequence of amino acid is primary structure of protein and in primary structure of protein, coming to question number 5, the given is the structure of protein which bond is responsible for the structure. See the structure, amino acids are written here, asparagine, glycine, phenylalanine, glutamate. So, you can see the sequence of amino acids is given, sequence of amino acid is which structure? primary structure of protein and in primary structure of protein amino acids are attached with each other with the help of peptide bond peptide bond also known as amide bond amide bond is a general name if amide bond is present in protein then it is known as peptide bond peptide bond is a strong covalent bond that's why on denaturation only the secondary tertiary and quaternary structures are lost but primary structure is retained because of these strong covalent bonds. So answer here is which bond? Covalent bond in primary structure. Let me also tell you the bonds in other structures of proteins, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure. In secondary structure the bond is hydrogen bond that is in alpha helix and beta sheets they are stabilized by hydrogen bonds. In tertiary structures we have hydrogen bond, hydrophobic bond, ionic bond and, and disulfide bonds. Now in quaternary structure we have hydrogen, hydrophobic and ionic bonds. Ionic or electrostatic is one and the same thing. Coming to question number 6, which of the following is true about ketone bodies? You know we have 3 ketone bodies that is acetoacetate, beta hydroxybutyrate and acetone. These are formed during starvation condition in the body and also they are formed in diabetic person because diabetic situation is same like fasting or starvation condition because glucose is not entering the cells. So option A, acetoacetate is the most common ketone body. No, this is wrong. Because beta hydroxybutyrate is the most common ketone body found in blood and urine. Option B says beta hydroxybutyrate is the first ketone body to be synthesized. No, acetoacetate is the first ketone body to be synthesized. That's why acetoacetate is also known as primary ketone body. And the other two ketone bodies, beta hydroxybutyrate and acetone, they are also known as secondary ketone bodies because they are synthesized from acetoacetate in the body. Option C, thiophorase is absent in liver. Thiophorase is the first enzyme of ketone body utilization. This enzyme is absent in liver so that liver can never use ketone bodies. Liver has to produce ketone bodies for heart and brain. Liver can never use ketone bodies. So this line is correct that this thiophorase enzyme is absent in liver. Option D says muscles cannot use ketone bodies. This is wrong because muscles can use ketone bodies. Earlier this thing was a controversy that muscles can use ketone bodies or not. But now this thing is clear in your standard books that muscles can use ketone bodies. So answer here is C option is true. Coming to question number 7, which one of the following tissue can metabolize glucose, fatty acids and ketone bodies all can be utilized by which tissue? Options given are liver, muscle, brain and RBCs. Liver cannot use ketone body, I just told you in the previous question. Why? Because of absence of enzyme thiophorase, which is the first enzyme of ketone body utilization. Then muscles, muscles can use all these three things that is glucose also, fatty acids also and ketone bodies also. So answer is B, muscles here. Next option C, brain. Brain can use glucose and brain can also use ketone bodies but brain cannot use fatty acids because fatty acids cannot cross the blood brain barrier. Option D RBCs. RBCs can only use glucose. They cannot use fatty acids. They cannot use ketone bodies because there is no mitochondria in RBCs. Beta oxidation of fatty acid also occurs in mitochondria. Ketone body utilization also occurs in mitochondria. And when RBCs don't have mitochondria, then they cannot use fatty acids or ketone bodies. Coming to question number 8, all of the following lipoproteins are increased in type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia except 
let me tell you about type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia type in type 3 the defect is in epoe lipoprotein there is defect in epoe epoe is the ligand for chylomicron remnant and vldl remnant so chylomicron remnant and vldl remnant are not taken up by liver so they will increase in blood right option a vldl remnant that is increased option b chylomicron remnant is increased option c triglycerides are also increased let me tell you chylomicron remnant and vldl remnant contain both triglycerides and cholesterol and let me tell you vldl remnant is also known as ideal ideal that is intermediate density lipoprotein so option a and d are same options you can say and question is asking you let's read the question again all of the following lipoproteins are increased in type 3 except now you can see that all these four things are increased in type 3 lipo hyperlipoproteinemia but the questions word is very very important mm -hmm. that they are asking you which of the following lipoprotein is increased except can you differentiate between lipid and lipoprotein lipoprotein means hdl ldl vldl and lipid means triglyceride cholesterol so the question is asking you lipoprotein not lipids and triglyceride cholesterol are lipids so answer is c here that is not a lipoprotein it is a lipid question number nine hdl is synthesized and secreted from hdl is synthesized from liver cells and also from intestinal cells my last question here question number 10 the base sequence of the strand of dna used as template for transcription has the base sequence this what is the base sequence of rna product so this base sequence is given and they are saying that this is dna template strand now when transcription will occur rna will be formed taking this dna as a template so we have to tell the sequence of rna product now when this sequence is given in the question without writing direction then obviously left side is 5 dash and right side is 3 dash now rna product will be exactly complementary to this right so direction is also opposite 3 dash here and 5 dash here now the complementary nucleotide to g is c and then u then a g a u g so this is our answer but when we are writing this answer then our left side is 3 dash and right side is 5 dash if we have to write this sequence without writing direction if we have to write this sequence without writing direction then we have to bring 5 dash to left hand side 3 dash to right hand side because this is the standard always so answer will be g u a g a u c so option d will be the answer g u a g a u c that will be the answer because in your options they have not written the direction and when direction is not written then it is standardized that left is 5 dash and right is 3 dash this is it with this video thanks for watching best wishes for your exam